And it's Corey. And we're back. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about buyers and the emotions involved when buying a home as well as selling. But I think for buyers, it, the emotions are pretty high, yeah. um, especially when you find something that you love. So, um, Yeah, it's been, uh, especially when I first got into it, I was working with a lot of buyers and that was, um, it was fun, especially if you've been a buyer in the last two years. And you've experienced this badness. <laughs> That's actually fun. That's oh yeah, <laughs> sarcastic. I don't know if I would actually say fun. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it, it's stressful and it, and it's a process. And uh, we were talking earlier about this and how important it is to choose the right realtor, even on the mm -hmm. buying side. So yep. it's not just on the selling side where all the importance should be placed. Uh, choosing a realtor to represent you on the buying side is just as important, if not even more important. Absolutely, I know. Like when we have people call us on our listings buyers mm -hmm. and they want to see the house and we say do you have a realtor no i'm just calling the realtor on the listing and you know as a realtor i would i'm not going to say typical realtor what i'm going to say is the majority of realtors would be happy to double end that deal yes what mean that means you get double the commission which yep. you know payday you know jackpot but mm -hmm. um in our situation for our team we don't do that so we referred out to another agent because they're calling around to listing agents and there's zero representation there, in my opinion. So you can get yourself into a lot of trouble doing that. Well, you've got to think about it the, the way when we've talked about this before, when you look at it and you're representing a seller. So if I'm representing that seller, I have a fiduciary commitment to right. them to get them right. the best possible deal. So if I'm going to represent this buyer at the same time, how is that, how is it even possible? Right. So I call you and say, Hey, Corey, I like that house. You have it listed. What do you think I should offer? So in your mind, well, and, and what are you thinking? It's going to be, well, think about it that way too. The, the, what incentive is there for you as the listing agent who will get paid more money to right. sell it higher anyway, right. to, to get tell them the buyer. a deal? Right. To tell the buyer to get them a deal. Right. It doesn't make any sense. Right. And so like the day before, I'm the seller and I say, hey, Corey, you know, I need 350 for this house or I'm not selling it. Yeah. In your mind, you're thinking, well, I told him 340 was where it should be priced at. I don't think he's going to get 350 mm -hmm. Now we have a buyer calling. He might not be aware of this, the comps in the area. Um, and so what are you going to tell him? As a, you know, as a buyer's agent, to him and the listing agent, which again, yeah, we don't agree with. But what would the majority of realtors tell the buyer, knowing that that eight, the seller wants three fifty? Well, exactly. That there's no incentive to to help that buyer out. Right. So you're going to pay three fifty as a buyer, and find out the neighbor's house that's identical or even upgraded sold for three forty. Mm -hmm. So you know, in that situation, you get emotional about it. Well, and that's where a lot of people have the mentality that, oh, you know what, if I go with the listing agent, I'm getting myself a deal. Like they're, they're, they're offering me a deal by going through them. And, and, right. But it's, that's not. There's no deal. There is no <laughs> deal. There's no incentive for them to help you. This is why yeah. you should always have someone that represents you and represents you only. That's true. And there are other provinces that have adopted this already. Like we look at BC, mm -hmm. um, multiple representation isn't a thing there. Yeah. And there's reasoning behind why that's happened. So. So that's why we kind of decided, like, let's talk about the importance of having someone represent you and your right. best interests. Right. I mean, even when you have someone representing you, this is another thing, how to choose a realtor, right? I'm going to yes. tell a little story. And uh, this has happened to me several times where I've had my clients who, you know, I've obviously have a lot of past clients and they know people. So um, some of my past clients have friends, family in conversation the friends and family talk about oh man i just bought a house this is what happened da, da, da. and then uh, my clients say oh man that's a bad situation like your realtor might not have represented you properly call my friend kim she'll you know what i mean she'll kind of walk you through it now that's a hard position for me to be in because i'm answering the phone it just happened last week and um the lady i was speaking to said we want out of this deal. Uh, we don't feel like the realtor that was representing us, you know, did a thorough job mm -hmm. and now we don't know what to do. And so I'm kind of advising them at the same time, they have representation from a realtor, 
But in this situation, they um, so there was a driveway on the property that mm -hmm. looked like it was on the property. So if you look at the drone shots, there's some cars parked there. And when you drill down, like when you go on to the back end system, which we have access to, yeah. the driveway is not even part of the listing. So they have no, no driveway. But in the listing, it says side drive. So number one problem. Yeah. Number two problem is that the seller on this particular property, so they were buying the house. The seller on the property was a licensed realtor. And this realtor was actually giving them a vendor take back mortgage. So that has to be disclosed before the buyers even put in an offer knowing there is uh, some interest here. Like, you know what I mean? Like you have to disclose the interest of the seller because mm -hmm. the seller's a realtor. It's complicated. That was not disclosed to them. Yeah. So Number two. For, yeah. for those of you that are unaware, vendor take back is basically when the seller is providing Agrees. that mortgage. Right. So instead he's, of a bank or private right. lender, they become a, be essentially a private lender at that right. point. Another situation for this uh, problem is the buyer's agent convinced them to put a $35,000 deposit on a $290,000 purchase. Like, I haven't seen a $35,000 deposit in a while. And you, you know, you'd see them on maybe eight, nine million dollar homes. Yeah. On a 290, that's... A, a strong deposit is, is good, like 100% if you're going in, especially in multiples. But third, like that might be, because it is going to go towards your down payment at the end of the right. day. But, yeah. but still, at the end of the day, that's... But now they're having is issues, necessary? right? Oh, and he also, um, the, the other agent did not recommend that they got an inspection, even though they weren't being, they weren't competing with any other offers. So there was no reason not to get an inspection. And they have um, the neighbor, when they went and did a walkthrough, the neighbor started talking to them oh. and said, you know, we noticed on the listing, it said block foundation, that's not block. And they think that it might be pillar and post, which is not disclosed in the listing. So, but now they didn't do an inspection. So now they're kind of, uh, they have a $35,000 deposit. Yep. They could lose that. And that's one thing we, we talked about this the other day too. You have to be very, very cautious about what's on the listing remarks. So like yeah. if it says on realtor.ca, it says it's block foundation, but it actually is a pillar and post foundation. You might not have a leg to stand on at that point because the, the MLS is just an advertisement. What overrides that is what's in your, your agreement of purchase and sale. So if there's no mention of that, if you're unsure of anything, it needs to be put in that agreement of purchase and right. sale. So um, even if you're not using us and you're using someone else and you're unsure of something, ask your realtor to make sure that's disclosed. Double check. A hundred percent. That's why inspections are, they should be mandatory in my opinion. I agree too. And, and this is where we talked about it on our last podcast where the government's talking about, about making that um, a right, which it technically it is, is right. <laughs> but yeah, it's, I, I don't know how they're going to do that. And I'd still, I still, I would like to know. For older homes, like I can, I, if it's a brand new build, you know what I mean? You still have a ser seven year Tyrion warranty, that kind of thing. Yeah. But like, it's an, this was an old house, very old house. You know, the floors looked a little slopey to me from the photos. And that should just be definitely a thing that you put in your, well, in and your offer. Especially if you're looking at pillar and post, that's not a cheap fix. And it's very, that's, that's a detriment to a sale. Like, honestly, People see pillar and post and they run. Yeah, you've got think your pillar and post, your foundation issues, your structural issues. These aren't just little things that you can just uh, lipstick and mascara. Like no. these are going to cost you a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and can be the difference between you affording your house and not affording your house. Right. So these are things that you have to you have to look out for. Mm -hmm. So how do you pick the person to represent you to make sure that they that you are going to make those right decisions that they are going to protect you? Mm -hmm. Is having the person that's representing the seller going to be the best idea no, there? Absolutely not. Well, we've already gone over that. That's what I mean. So, like, yeah, it's, we're 100% it's, against that. So, like, another thing that for me, I think you should be interviewing multiple realtors, even yeah. if you're just on the buyer side. Mm -hmm. So, even if you come to me and you say, Yeah, I want to, I want to, I want to use you, Corey, because I, I know you. I still recommend you talk to other realtors. That's okay. It's not going to hurt my feelings. I want you to pick someone that you're mm -hmm. going to trust. Someone that's going to have your best. With. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know what? If you're not comfortable working with me, you don't feel that trust. That's fine. I completely get that. That'd be impossible. <laughs> <laughs> you're pretty trustworthy. I try. I try. 
but like that, it's like anything, and, and I, it's something I won't take personal. At the end of the day, like right. I got in this into this career to help people, mm-hmm. and, and that's what I'm going to do. And if you know what, if you don't think I'm the right person for that, that's that's fine. But mm-hmm. if if I am, then I'm gonna I'm gonna <clears throat> represent you the way you should be represented. Right. I mean, you. I mean, you spend a lot of time with your realtor. So, in a buying situation, you might see I don't know twenty homes, thirty homes. I've I've some buyers have seen fifty homes. Right, you are going to be seeing your realtor on a regular basis. If that realtor is annoying <laughs> the shit out of you, you know what I mean. Right from the get go, just don't pick them. I don't care how much experience they have, whatever. It's you are going to be with this person a lot. Yes. And so, vice versa. I've actually had people that might have wanted to work with me for whatever reason, and I just felt like you know what, this isn't the best match. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes I'll you know recommend Corey or for different reasons but every personality you know what I mean has another personality that might not get along that well yeah you know it's got to be a right fit 100% and that's where like intuition plays a big role in it too Mm -hmm. like you 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 know when you know I mean your realtor has to have experience if they don't have a lot of experience make sure they're on a team or you know with an office that they have a mentor somebody that they can ask Because honestly, I could do, you know, nowadays you can get your real estate license if you really go at it quick. What, six months, maybe four? Probably. And then boom, you're out there. There's no like internship or any, you know, anything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, You don't have to be on a team right away. So a lot of times you're on your own. If you, and if you start on your own, there's a lot of things that could go wrong. Absolutely. Um, and uh, like on that note about experience, this is where I thought about this the other day too. You can, you can talk to someone that says, "Yes, I have, I have ten years experience," and and be like, "Well, that's a lot." But mm-hmm. is this a full time gig? Is mm-hmm. this something that they've just been doing for ten years mm-hmm. and they do a deal a year? Um, yeah. You've got to see what their actual credentials are. Like, have that. And so, how do you prove that, Corey? <laughs> Well, it's easy. I can, That's we, we can pull thing. up all of our sales. We can pull all our sales up, but I've okay. So I've had situations where I'm not going to say names, but situations where you know someone has said, "I've had all this experience and I've sold all these houses." How do you prove that to someone? You know, like anybody can go in, yeah, and BS you till they're blue in the face, and there's you know, the so, client really. Well, you can't provide you need to, proof, you, you need know. To get yourself a numbers person. <laughs> <laughs> but really, like all this stuff, because we we've, we've talked about this before too, where other claims have been made, and you know what? There are ways we can see whether that's we, we can check the BS meter on that a little bit. Well, okay. So as a home seller, I have an agent come in, and he's telling me he sold this and this amount of houses. He's number one in Ontario, and how am I going to know? He could he could say whatever he wants to me if he's very convincing. I might believe them. Well, at that point, you have to, and it goes back to intuition. Mm-hmm. Trust your judgment. Ask around. Ask people mm-hmm. that, that have dealt with them yeah. before. Get, do your research, basically. You know, one thing that I really have, uh, note, like, clients in the past that have chosen our team, sometimes over other realtors, is that a lot of realtors will go in and they will talk 90% about themselves and only 10% about what the client's needs, what they're looking for, like what's their situation, right? And so that's, I think that's a red flag is when someone comes in and they're just yapping, I've done this and I've done this and, you know. Yeah, there's quite a few red flags to look out for. I think that'd be one Mm -hmm. of them. Um, Like I've been, myself, I've been in like real estate for almost three now, but sales since I was a teenager, so right. over 20 years. Like, you've got to know how to build relationships with people. Mm-hmm. It transfers into any industry at the end of the day, and that's how you'll build referrals. Like, you, you treat people with respect, you fight and you get them everything that you can, and you do the best job that you possibly can, then your word of mouth is going to travel. Yeah. And that's why we're really pushing that back. Talk to people, ask around, do a little bit of research. Don't mm-hmm. just grab the first realtor you know because my cousin's a realtor or my brother knows a guy and that sort of go thing. Go on Google reviews, go on Facebook reviews, um, see what they're saying, like listen to some of the videos. You know, you're going to yeah. be able to tell personalities on videos, see if you're going to maybe jive with that person. Mm-hmm. 
a hundred percent. It's just, it's all we're doing is really pushing the emphasis that just make sure you have someone protecting you as the buyer and your, in, yeah, and your interest. Right. Because at the end of the day, this is one of the biggest decisions you're going to make in your life. This 100%. is one of the most expensive decisions mm-hmm. you're going to make. So have someone that's going to have your best interests at heart. And if someone's pushing you like, oh, if you don't put this, like this situation I was talking about earlier, they said that if they didn't, you know, put the 35000 down, if they didn't pay the full price, there's going to be someone... There's been so many showings and, you know, meanwhile, it's been on the market for a while. So if you're feeling that there's pressure yeah. in this market for buyers, honestly, so. I take it with a grain of salt. I would say, you know what, let me sleep on it, put the emotions aside and actually make a sound decision. Absolutely. So that's, um, it's FOMO. Mm-hmm. It's, it's fear of missing out. Yeah. Every single person has that, that innate fear and it's such a... I, I hate the sales tactic when people do that because it's not it's not fair it's not right it's, it's not, not even true right but if, mm-hmm. but you can play on the psychology of people and oh if you don't do this then you're gonna miss out right. it's the, the same fear. thing look at yeah. like Bitcoin and and mm-hmm. and I was just talking to someone the other day about this with with my generation it was Beanie Babies you had to <laughs> you had to buy the Beanie <laughs> Babies because they're gonna be worth all this money oh, someday yeah. do you have some I don't have any Beanie Babies <laughs> but like it's that it's that FOMO we're as as a society we're we're suckers to mm-hmm. FOMO. So, yep. so if you feel like you're putting that situation where if I don't do this, I'm going to miss out, that right there is another red flag. Yeah, So exactly. these are just some things you really need to look out mm-hmm. for. And again, you can't prove if anyone else wants it. You can't prove how many showings there were. It could be just a line. So, yeah. So be cautious. Yes, 100%. <laughs> If you have any more questions or anything else, of course, we're here anytime for you guys. Absolutely. See you till next time. Bye.